Hey everyone, here is one fun fact about every League of Legends champion. You might even see some familiar faces in this video too. Also, this video took literally weeks to research and throw together, and most of you who watch aren't subscribed, so if you enjoyed, please consider taking a second to help me reach my goal of hitting 200k subs. Thank you guys, and with that, let's get into the video. Aatrox was the only champion to have an 100% presence rate at the World Championships this year, being picked 22 times and banned 58 times. And even in play-ins, he still had a 96% presence. Did you know that Ari almost didn't have ears or tails? As you can see, her her original published splash art on the left has no fox ears and the tail is just part of her dress instead of actually being a part of her body. And the reason they didn't go with the first concept is because they were concerned if they could make Ari's tail connect to her dress in game in a way that looked natural. Additionally, they wanted to differentiate her from the myths that she was built on. Luckily though, the community decided to speak up and they decided to modify her after all. Close call guys, close call. Kali is mained by 1.5% of the League of Legends community, which is actually kind of a lot. In the lore, Uction was actually beaten up to the brink of death when he was young, but a woman named Shadia saved him. Alistar used to have four fingers in his old splash art, even though he never actually had four fingers in game, and he still only has three fingers today. This is the very first drawing of Amumu and what his original art concept looked like. It almost seems like he had a tibbers of his own back then. This is what the old Anivia's voice sounded like. No, Polly does not want a cracker. I am eternal. Are you? Annie's full name is Annie Haster. Also, Reddit backwards spells Tibbers, just so you know. Hey guys, really quick, I wanted to talk about one of my personal favorite free games out there, and that is War Thunder, and I'm really excited that they're the sponsor for today's video. I've personally always loved vehicle fighting games, and I can vouch that War Thunder is insanely fun and addicting. For those who don't know, War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made, and in the game you can play more than 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships in some insane PvP battles. Personally, I love playing on a more casual level because I just think flying around and shooting planes down is oddly entertaining, but the nice thing is that there's also a more competitive setting too if you're into that. Also, the detail that goes into these vehicles is crazy, and they're even modeled all the way down to their individual components. War Thunder, of course, has incredible graphics with 4K resolution, and the sound effects and music are just as good. Plus, you can play now on PC, Xbox Series X, and S, or PlayStation. So make sure to at least try it out for yourself. You seriously won't regret it. And if you use my link below, you'll even get a large free bonus pack for registering, which include multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, boosters, and a ton more. All right, thanks guys, and back to the video. Aphelios was originally supposed to be a wizard with an arsenal of spells, but the gameplay wasn't quite unique enough compared to already existing mages. But that being said, I won't be surprised if Riot introduces a full-on wizard-like champion in the future, because they specifically said this while making Aphelios. Even after almost 150 champions, League of Legends doesn't have a wizard. It has a shirtless blue guy, seven versions of him in fact, but still no wizard. When you think about it, it's kind of dumb that Ash is from Freljord and she has no pants on. In fact, she even has a voice line when she runs into Braum where she comments on it. So Braum, no shirt, huh? And I don't have pants. Yay, Freljord. When Aurelian Soul buys a Guardian's Orb in Aram, he has a voice line where he says, A snow globe? Perfect for my collect to destroy you. Destroy you! Now believe it or not, Azir is going to have an ability that allowed him to summon a turret. And on top of that, the turret would shoot out a laser beam of light that would rotate. It was given the title Windmills of Death, and rightfully so. Hi everyone, Happy Chime Noises here. Did you know the Bard actually has a secret voiceover script with real lines they use to inspire the sounds he makes in-game? Unfortunately, these were never released to the public, but we do know they exist. And even though Bard himself doesn't have a voice actor, his meeps actually do. And it's done by Riot U. Tora, one of Bard's audio designers. If this name sounds familiar, that's because it's one of the noises that meeps make when they spawn. Occasionally they whisper, Utora. Also, another fact before I go, Snow Day Bard is the best skin. There's no debate. One of Belveth's scrapped abilities was that she used to be able to make a ton of permanent long-range void portals as the game went on. And in the late game, you would have an endless supply of portals that allow you to go pretty much anywhere you wanted. However, they thought it was too similar to Rek'Sai's kit, so they got rid of it. Let's Crank is voiced by Duncan Watt, who surprisingly also does the voice for Rannis. According to the lore, before Brand became Brand, he was actually a human named Keegan Road. He was a mage apprentice to Rise, but after seeing a fragment of the world rune, Greed overtook took him and he lost all his humanity becoming brand. Rom's E ability, Unbreakable, was originally called Immovable Object, and it even made it to the PBE being called that. The name was eventually changed because Brom can technically still move during the ability, so it wasn't exactly immovable. In fact, it was very movable. After Arcane was released in November 2021, Caitlyn's pick rate skyrocketed almost 20% within the month. During the Awakened cinematic, you can see Camille's eyes turn orange for a second as an allusion to her passive in the game where she gains a shield based on if they're doing AD or AP damage. According to the lore, not only 
is Cass obviously poisonous, but she's also crazy strong. There were descriptions of her splitting stone in half like it was glass. Did you know Cho'Gath has no lore at all? No short stories, no canon cinematics, and two thirds of his bio is just explaining what the void is. He basically doesn't <laughs> exist and... Let's be honest here, if he actually did exist in the state he's described as, that's it dude, Rune Terra's lost, it's over. Quirky Quirky's butt wiggle animation was inspired by this video of Quirky shaking his butt. Darius has a voice line referring to Garen's spin to win strategy where he says, Not so! Oh, oh. Oh, how's he do it? And, Not so! Oh, oh. Dizzy. The new Winter Blessed Diana skin has a special visual effect that goes off whenever you get a pentakill on her. It turns the entire summoner's rift into a winter map for a few seconds. It's a really cool effect, but it's almost taunting us that Riot never added the real one back in. Did you know that Dr. Mundo is actually immune to time shifts and still retains memories when they happen? Which is also the reason that Echo can't beat Mundo in a fight. This was confirmed in his new lore released after his rework when the two encountered each other in a short story called Do No Harm. The phrase welcome to the League of Draven was actually just something one of the rioters jokingly wrote on a whiteboard to kickstart brainstorming for the champion. But eventually it just caught on so they ended up keeping it in. In the non-canon The Path of the Champion's Adventure, one of Echo's after images named Ozzy actually started acting on its own and even desired to not be reset and remain as an individual. Kind of gives me Echo Age of Ultron vibes. Did you know when playing Elise you can repel from the other side of the wall to the wolves on the blue side of the map without vision, but when you try it on the red side of the map you can't actually see the camp. In other words, one side of the map is kind of rigged for Elise players. Eve is voiced by Mara Junit who voiced Elisa from Genshin Impact and she actually did a few characters in Arcane too, like Jules and Shula. When it came to making Pulse Fire Ezreal, the designers were struggling to brainstorm concepts for the skin that didn't look weird. For example, originally he had a vacuum cleaner looking thing on his back, but one day one of the animators, Shu, walked by with his hard plastic motorcycle backpack and when the designers saw him they knew that that was the look. So they had him pose for them which is where they got the basic idea. Fiddlesticks' voice actor is Kellen Goff and surprisingly there was almost no editing done to the voice. Just some touch ups but that's pretty much it. I mean, listen to this. End of men, first of ten. End of men, first of ten. Fjord's old ultimate used to be entirely different than it is today. It was called Blade Waltz, and it was almost like Yi's Q, but on steroids. It made her untargetable and also slapped someone around five times. Riot used to actually sell $80 fizz onesies, and in the description, they wrote, warning, wearing this may create random urges to hop everywhere and yell shark. My question is, where's the Urgot onesie? Not gonna lie, I really couldn't find anything good about Galio besides him being being freakishly massive in the lore, which we already knew, so here's Patrick Gallio. When it came to Gangplank's development, they weren't really sure what his last ability should be. And then Wright Caldwell suggested that he should have an orange to ward off scurvy. And in case you didn't know, scurvy is a disease caused by vitamin C deficiency, hence the orange. Here in Steel Legion Recall is a reference to Thundercats. Nar's placeholder during development was a mini golden nautilus that threw out boomerangs and turned into Warwick when he got big. Gragas has his own beer brand called Graggy Ice, and he uses Froyordian ice to brew it. Also, if you look at Olaf's Brolof skin, you can actually see his Axes are made out of the Greggy Ice logo. Graves was originally an ADC before his rework, mainly because his autos were single shot instead of spread, making him much more viable in lane since his autos couldn't get blocked like they do now. In the lore, Gwen has the power to change her scissors into any size she wants. Ekrim was originally going to be a ghost of a dead knight that was able to summon an undead horse as well, but by the time he was approved to become a champion, he had already become the centaur-like creature he is today. On a similar note, Heimerdinger wasn't actually going to be a Yordle, but they figured he was closest to looking like a Yordle already, so they just threw on a pink nose and turned his weird brain into hair instead. Also, Old Heimerdinger was nicknamed Broccoli Head just because of the way his brain looked. In development, Alawi had a somewhat problematic bug where tentacles would spawn at an unusual rate after leaving the vessel circle. I mean, I could see why this might cause a few problems. I don't know. Aurelia has a voice line where she says, Somewhere, a forest is missing its idiot. Whenever she's playing against Ivern. Did you know that by technicality, Ivern is Lilia's grandfather? Back when he was a Freljordian barbarian, he chopped down the legendary God Willow tree and fused with it. A piece of the God Willow then sprouted the mother tree, which would later go on to spawn Lilia. So yeah, if I already didn't like Ivern enough, he's also a kooky grandpa. In the old lore, Janna's full name was Janna Windforce, and she was actually just a girl who grew up in the slums of Zahn, but eventually rose up to power thanks to her magic. Also, at one point, her nudes basically got leaked. Kind of. Did you know that there was an entire conspiracy theory that Jarvan 4 is actually LeBlanc? It all started with this photo showing a huge fight between Demacia and Noxus, and in the photo, you can see Swain and J4 going at it. But in Swain's breastplate, you can see a reflection, but it's not Jarvan's reflection, instead 
is LeBlanc's. Because of this, it was believed Jarvan is actually LeBlanc in disguise as a spy. To add to this theory too, LeBlanc was the leader of the Black Rose, a massive power behind the Noxian throne, but it somehow vanished overnight. Did you know that the new reworked Jax is going to have a hidden passive where if you sit in the river and don't move, you'll start getting fish every few seconds. And for each fish you get, you'll also get one extra gold. It's also worth mentioning that the passive icon is his current passive icon, but now it'll actually make sense. Now imagine how broken this would be if he had a real fishing pole. Did you know Jace almost had an ultimate where he would slam his hammer down creating a shockwave knocking up enemies? This actually sounds crazy familiar to Reinhardt's ultimate from Overwatch, and also just would have been an insane teamfight ability. It was confirmed by Riot a long time ago that Jin shaves his balls. Yup, that's it. Jinx's title is Jinx the Loose Cannon, but unfortunately this got translated to Jinx the Floozy Cannoneer in one of the regions by accident. Kaisa's wings on her suit were almost instead separate void creatures that were taken along on her shoulders. But later on, they decided to make them a part of her suit, or to be more specific, the creature that is her suit. To tease the release of Callista, seven of the champions back then had their champion pages shrouded with black mist to mark their betrayal. Cass for betraying Sivir, Hecram for betraying Callista, Lissandra for betraying Freljord, TF for betraying Graves, Xerath for betraying Azir, and Zed for betraying Shen and his order. Also, Callista's voice actress is named Misty. You get it? It's funny because Callista has Mist and Misty did her name okay never mind karma surprisingly has a positive win rate in the mid lane at 53.5 percent but a losing win rate as a support at 49.1 percent parthus had a passive way back in the day where he was immune to sleeps polymorphs and one other cc type as well but as broken as this sounds it actually wasn't too bad back then because there just wasn't as many abilities that dealt those cc types there's a guy in bulgaria who has a massive kassadin statue guarding his garage and on top of that the sign says hit level 16 r is fully stacked enter at your own risk okay i might have made that last part up there was a little easter egg with the old League of Legends client where if you went to Katarina's old champion page, selected abilities and hit control one, it would play a video where she said this. Killing is my duty. Fun is yelling surprise. Kill's basic attacks are the second fastest in the game at 5,000 speed among all ranged basic attacks, only falling behind Aphelios's Severum Gum, which has a speed of 92,400. For reference, the slowest basic range attack in the game is Soraka's Banana at 1,000 speed and the average in the game is between 1,500 and 2,000. Did you know that Kane's Scythe was almost going to be retractable? Even though it probably wouldn't work as well in the game, it was still a pretty cool animation. It's estimated that Kennen is around 60 years old according to the lore, but it was never really specified. Also, back in the day, Riot took the somewhat lazy route when making his deadly Kennen skin splash art as well as his Swamp Master skin splash art because they were both just rip-offs of his old splash art. On patch 12.10, there was a small somewhat problemsome glitch that allowed Kha'Zix to unalive himself off the map. Last year during the LCS Summer Split, there was a game where FlyQuest's ADC and top laner completely denied their own Kindred free stacks. It was kind of hard to watch. Are you f***ing <laughs> joking? <laughs> You're f***ing Right. Kidding, no, you're dude! You're actually reported. <laughs> That's so f gross. That is the most distinguished military person to ever live. However, most of his titles are made up or self-proclaimed. Also, Dracolops, the creature Cled rides, is actually a female, even though the posters that they used to tease him were a bit misleading. If you have Silent Knight, Sona, and Reindeer Kogma both play their joke together, Kogma will actually start singing Deck the Halls. <laughs> Also, for some reason, Wright even includes this in Cassiopeia's champion spotlight. Cassante's weapons are called Natofos, and in the lore, they can actually regenerate, which both happens in game after he ults, but also in the cinematic as well, switching from the more attacking style to the more defensive one. In the lore, LeBlanc is actually capable of creating multiple clones of herself to assist her in doing tasks. And in the Legends of Runeterra, there were some hints that implied that a lot of her clones actually went rogue over the years. Lee Sin started off as a champion called Chi Zun, and was a blind monk with a straw hat. If you look really closely at Leona's shield using the pool party Leona skin, you can see a Lunari insignia hidden at the bottom right inner side. Also, the insignia was originally meant to be a tattoo. Did you know Lilia's name in development was Cute Jungler? Did you know that Lilia used a 70% scaled down version of Science model during playtesting instead of maybe like, I don't know, Hecrim? Because they're like horses, deers. Kind of same thing. Did you know that Lilia's percent max health damage passive originally wasn't capped and could solo Baron at level 1? In light of her completely balanced kit, one of the playtesters, Gabrielle, created this temporary loading screen splash art, which was actually used up until her release. Did you know that mating season for deer takes place from September to December, typically peaking in October, and is usually referred to as the rut? In other words, there's still time. <clears throat> While making this video and with the release of Cassante, I also found out that Lilia is now the 69th champion alphabetically, so there's that too, I guess. Did you know that Lissandra possessed 
possesses telepathic abilities that allow her to walk through people's dreams, including her own. Additionally, every time she dies in someone else's dream, she loses a part of her spirit. Lucian's ultimate used to directly scale with attack speed and was actually the first ability in the game to do so, but it was changed back in patch 5.22. Did you know that Lulu's polymorph was originally going to turn you into a ladybug? They even messed with her turning you into a pig as well, but there were some cultural concerns, so it got cut. The senior designer Gumpy Monkey did mention though that they pitched the idea of a flying pig named Pigasus that farted rainbows, but unfortunately it was a no-go. Cosmic Lux in Dark Cosmic Lux's dance animation is a reference to Beat Saber. Also, a fun fact with her E on her Cosmic Lux skin is that they made it actually somewhat scientifically accurate. The two orbs in the middle are depictions of neutron stars orbiting each other, and as they orbit, they slowly drift closer, orbiting faster and faster until they eventually collide. This ultimately leads to creating one of the highest energy explosions possible in the universe, or in this case, Lux's E. Ooh, Malphite actually has a son named Chip. <laughs> Hello, little devil. And Chip is possibly a little chunk of rock that came off of Malphite. Nevertheless, they have a father-son dynamic. Rock solid. Black mountain, black hill. There was an old Journal of Justice issue that talked about how Malzahar was sacrificing Cassidan's daughter in the middle of Zaun, which caused a city-wide blackout. When Cassidan approached to stop him, Malzahar's dagger reacted with him, opening up a portal, and the void ended up sucking Cassidan's daughter in. Needless to say, your boy Cassidan wasn't too happy about that. Maokai's totemic Maokai skin splash art was actually inspired by Moana. I don't know how I never noticed this, but he has swords on his boots for some reason. I just know I'm gonna get a lot of crap in the comments for not knowing that. Anyways, even Nunu has a quote mocking him about it. Watch out! He has sword boots! Misfortune was given the name Misfortune due to an old sailor myth that women on ships brought misfortune. Mordekaiser was going to have a voice line when he first interacted with Kled where he said, what is a taco? But unfortunately, it got cut. This was a reference to someone on the forums a while back asking if Mord knew what a taco was. When Morgana was first being developed, they were exploring the idea of giving her an electric whip as her main weapon, but it was eventually scrapped. Did you know that Nami's ultimate was originally going to be a vector global skill shot that covered the entire map? It's crazy how they come up with this stuff sometimes. Sometimes. This is what Susan's first piece of concept art looked like, and his second piece of concept art looked like he was on a keto diet. This is some of Nautilus's first concept art, and it's crazy to think that they almost had a cracking coming out of them. When people asked Wright if Nico lays eggs, Wright's response was, stop asking, no lol. Also, apparently Nico's favorite food is cheese bread. If Nidalee dies twice in the first 10 minutes, her win rate plummets to 27.5%. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying, don't forget to sub, and here's a puppy. Thanks guys. Apparently Nila has the highest win rate when a Teemo top is on the team with her. Kind of interesting. If Nocturne is hit by Graves' smokescreen, Graves will say one of these voice lines. I got you, darkness. Who's in the dark now? One of the spells that was tested for Nunu and Willump involved using climbing rope to lasso other champions and successfully lassoing the champion would make it so they couldn't move a certain distance away from Nunu. Did you know Olaf received a prophecy from an elder shaman that he would live a long, prosperous life and die a peaceful death in his sleep, and that this was also the worst possible outcome for a life his tribe could imagine. So he set off from the failure to die a glorious death in battle and defy the shaman's vision. He traveled all over Runeterra fighting the mightiest foes he could, even fighting Bilgewater sea monsters during the Harrowing, which is why he and Lucian knew each other during the Ruination event. Funny thing is, the prophecy is true and Olaf will die peacefully in his sleep. So by technicality, as long as Olaf keeps fighting, he's immortal. Did you know you can see Pool Party Oriana in the background of Pool Party Lee Sin, but when she was released as her own skin, she looks nothing like it. This was mainly because it was deemed to be too simple of a design now. Or almost had an ability that allowed him to upgrade his own hammer into different kinds of weapons, and each weapon had a unique attack. For example, the upgraded hammer would do AoE damage, and the blade would do piercing damage. Pantheon's spear is named Skyfall, his shield is named Aegis, his clock is named Solstice, and his helmet is named Nova. According to Riot, Pantheon is also 5 feet 9 inches tall. I don't know how I never noticed this either, but there are actually poppies, as in Poppy the Flower, in Poppy's splash art. Kind of a fun easter egg. Pike originally had a fishing net cape that would cause his E to leave behind the hooks of his net. Also, did you know that Pike was almost going to be an undead Yordle. Did you know when it comes to Kiana, one of her original visual directions of her was for her to be from a race of metal people from a new continent, but they didn't have the time to make an entirely new continent, so they changed her to be in a faction instead. Quinn was originally called Falconeer, and even before that, the idea of her came from a champion concept known as Eagle Rider, which was basically Quinn and Olaf mixed together. When it comes to Rakan and Zaya, Riot tested two crazy abilities that were eventually scrapped. One was the ability to fire a beam like Velkaz's alt, but if they did it together, they can make it into a mega beam. The other was the ability to create a storm cloud with Zaya that would follow him around and strike people with lightning that were in the same area. There was also a version of this where the cloud would just knock the enemies back. According to Ramus's lore, there are festivals where people celebrate him by rolling around and here are some actual footage from the lore. 
needless to say, Ramus was very pleased this day. In development, Kha'Zix was used as a placeholder for Rek'Sai. Additionally, Rek'Sai originally had a separate ultimate with separate cooldowns for her burrowed form and her unburrowed form. For example, her terrifying burrow form would go underground for a few seconds and then pop up, stunning the enemy instead of knocking them up. Rel is only 16 years old in the lore, and according to Riot, shapes her mount as a horse instead of a basilisk, as a form of rebellion against the Noxus military system. Zahn's faction symbol is based on Renata's family logo, even further solidifying the fact that she was a big deal in Zahn. Renekton is a crocodile, not an alligator, which is also confirmed not only in the Legends of Runeterra, but also by Riot. It was also apparently mentioned that top lane has a large volume of salt. Sure, why not? Rengar is kind to believe that seeing a Yordle during a hunt is a good omen that the hunt will be successful. The bandages that Riven wears are to cover up the permanent scars from Zahnite Chemtech explosions during the invasion of Ionia. Rumble hates Heimerdinger because Heimerdinger allowed non-Yordles access to his inventions. Also, he's desperately crying for a VGU rework of his original skin. Because let's be honest, this thing looks terrible. Since Ryze's release, he has gone through six different reworks. He's just one of those champions that's so hard to nail down because he's so good in pro play but sucks so bad in solo queue. Samir is now the champion most likely to get a pentakill with a 2% chance when you play her, which is actually pretty freaking high. Did you know Sejuani currently wears the Seeker's Arm Guard item and it originally belonged to Lissandra? Also, did you know that the traditional Sejuani skin uses her old voiceovers, which is pretty cool? Senna used to actually have two pistols like Lucian, among a lot of other things. Senna used to have two pistols. She used to be super mobile. She had Ezreal's model. And her ultimate was, after every attack, she could teleport about as far as an Ezreal E. And her passive was, every attack had infinitely stacking percent max health damage. Basically what she'd do is she'd turn on her ultimate, and she'd basically kite circles around you while eventually killing you, because she'd just do more and more and more and more and more and more and more damage until you eventually died. When it comes to Seraphine, Riot tested an ability that allowed her to mind control her enemies. In other words, she could mesmerize a single target and gain control of their actions for a few seconds. Kind of crazy. Set was inspired by Silas's initial concept so much that he actually took one of his scrapped abilities. Silas was originally supposed to have Seth's W as confirmed by this reddit post here. But what I find more amusing is the comment blowing it saying thank you for not adding that. Oops. Did you know Shaka was almost in the same boat of having pretty much no lore except for one key detail we do know, that he is canonically the smallest champion in League of Legends because he is a literal toy. A while back they actually tried updating Shen to make him look more tankier since he's a tank and all, but apparently big buff Shen looked super weird so they scrapped it all together. According to the lore, Ezreal likes to kiss Shavana's leg. You can't make this stuff up. In the lore, Singed is responsible for creating the poisons that destroyed Riven's warband in Master Yi's village. Seems like a great guy. When League of Legends was still in development, this is what Sion's shop screen looked like. Also worth noting back then is you can improve intelligence. This is anything but useless, but the Brazilian voice actress for Sivir, Christiane Luis, was tragically murdered in 2021. And when she passed, everyone used Mercy's slogan, Heroes Never Die, in homage to her. It seriously is such a tragic story, but I hope she rests in peace. Next tech gemstones are actually the souls of Skarner's people, or more specifically, the Brackern. Basically, their essence is poured into the crystals that make up their bodies and emit powerful energy. Sona's passive is called Power Cord, and if you listen to the sound carefully, the sound they use when Sona's passive goes off is actually a power cord, which is pretty cool. Did you know the form Soraka takes that we see in League of Legends is not what she actually looks like? Much like Bard, as a celestial, she needed to take a mortal form to interact with Runeterra. So she took a form similar to that of the Atrani Vestaya tribes that reside on Mount Targon, since, you know, she wants to make them feel at ease. However, containing this mortal form is agony for her and is in constant pain to do so. Just another sacrifice she makes to help people. Apparently, rioter James Static Bach would walk around with a coat on his shoulders during Swain's development in order to promote the idea of his visual update. When Silas was being developed, they had to refactor after 97 of the other champions' ultimates to make Silas stealing their ultimate possible. A long time ago, Syndra could actually use other Syndra's balls when they're in a one-for-all, which as you can imagine, made things pretty chaotic. I mean, look at this. This is just insane. Just a bunch of balls flying all over the place. This person made a modded Gromp Tom Kench skin that works surprisingly well, almost a little too well. According to Riot, Talia's favorite hobbies are singing and making art, basically anything creative. Also, her favorite color is indigo. Did you know that Talon is the one who gave Katarina that big scar on her face when he attempted to assassinate her but failed? The initial concept of Tarek actually ended up splitting into both Ezreal and Tarek. Timo's Q range is exactly 36% longer than his auto attacks. Also, this is a terrifying drawing of what Timo might look like without hair. I somewhat feel like I need to apologize after showing you this. When Thresh was released back in 2013, his base health at level 18 was also 2013 HP as a little Easter egg. Also, the name Thresh originated from the word harvesting, since Thresh means to harvest a seed, and Thresh harvests, well, Souls. Tristana's weapon is called Boomer, which is why Ramus and Tristana 
I get an aging debuff in the bot lane together? <clears throat> After his release, Trundle actually managed to go two years without any balance changes, which is actually pretty dang impressive. Trindamir's sword is passed down to him by his father and has been passed down for generations. And his father in the lore had a quote where he said, Master using it and you can have this, which is a reference to the original Legends of Zelda game. Twisted Fate's name for his hat is Envy. Also, the cards that Twisted Fate used to have in his original concept art were freaking massive. Twitch was voiced by Doug Boyd, who also sadly passed away in 2021. Besides Twitch, Doug was probably best known for voicing Mr. Frog from Leapfrog. Udyr was actually the first champion released after the official launch of League of Legends back in 2009. Also, before his rework, the Scuttle actually had more animations than him. Someone a few years ago created a website called Praise Urgot that was made to send people after beating someone with Urgot, saying things like, time for crab and showing example of what a crab expert is capable of. There's also a link to get started, and if you click on it, it just says, get good. People who play Varus on average get 0 0.986 double kills per match. Also, Varus's Q piercing arrow is actually a rework of Tristana's old Q draw a beat ability. Apparently, if it's early enough in the game and respawn timers are low enough, you can condemn science passive, and it will follow them all the way back to the fountain and still hit them, which is what happened here, and it actually canceled Scion's teleport in the process. That's gotta be one of the unluckiest things I've ever seen in League. Did you know that Event Horizon or Vigar's E used to deal one point of true damage to every unit inside of the cage, and sometimes it could even kill them when the unit was at 1 HP? Belkaz and Draven actually share the same voice actor, Eric Bra. Crazy enough, he started his voice actor journey from just doing voices in a cubicle, and producers overheard him, so they gave him a shot. One of Vex's scrapped spells was the ability to slow down enemy missile speeds like Ash's All or even Miss Fortune's Ultimate, which actually would have been pretty cool, but they said there were too many technical challenges. When Vi went on sale way back in 2013, it was stated that Vi weighed in at 8,140 pounds with her gloves. Things might have changed a bit since then. This is probably one of the most accurate looking Viego cosplays I've ever seen. I mean, this guy literally looks like the real life Viego. And when you add in editing on the photos, it looks almost uncanny. Like this guy could just become the new splash art if he wanted to and no one would even notice. Victor in Arcane was voiced by Harry Lloyd, who was also the same voice actor who played Viserys Targaryen, in other words, Daenerys Targaryen's brother, Patrick Vlad. Did you know that Volley Bear is one of the Freljordian demigods who helped form the landscape? Mounds apparently exist because Orn got into a fist fight with the earth, but Volley Bear is responsible for the first river, and rumor has it, he pissed the first river. This isn't actually true though, as in lore it's clearly stated that it was actually made from blood, but the rumor of Volley pissing the first river came from both this quote from Orn, Volley Bear made the first river. You do not want to know how. And this quote from Volley Bear. The first river was a river of blood. What has my brother been telling you? So you can probably see with a touch of wacky interpretation how this rumor started. Did you know in Work's second lore, Work was actually an alchemist who was known as the Death Marker by Ionians, and Soraka sacrificed her divinity to transform him into a wolf as punishment for his war crimes. Wukong was picked the most out of any champion in pro play last season, being grabbed 1651 times, and the next closest was Nar at 1389 picks. Wukong also had a 57% win rate too, which is pretty freaking good considering how much he was played. Did you know when Zaya and Rakan dance near each other at the same time, they'll do a unique dance animation? You have to get the timing just right, but if you do, it actually looks pretty cool. Did you know Zerath is not an ascended like Azir, Nazis, or Renekton, but technically is classified as a Bakai, human-animal hybrids that underwent the Ascension ritual and failed. Most of these happened before the big sun disc and Shreema went up, so they don't really exist anymore. They still have the immortality of the true ascended, but lack the godlike powers, size, and didn't exactly keep their minds intact. Zerath is a weird exception since he absorbed so much of the sun disc's power, he became pure pure arcane energy, but his ascension ritual still technically failed, and as such, he is technically a Bakai. Shin Zhao has the highest AFK rate out of any champion on the NA server, leaving 0.7% of the time. Player's perception of Yasuo changes drastically depending on the region you're in. For example, in terms of fear to play against, players in the NA server rated him 137 out of 140 champions available at the time, but in China, they rated him 23, and appropriately so, because the Chinese nickname for him also translates to Happy Windman. The idea of Yone as a champion was pitched because they thought it was cool he had two swords in the Legends of Runeterra. Work was the first champion to be released before his champion spotlight due to Freak's flight being delayed on the way back from Dreamhack in Sweden. Also, it's possible that these two are best friends because York digs graves. Did you know that Yumi's ultimate almost gave her the ability to attack enemies while also knocking them back until they ran into terrain? Kinda like Cassante's ult, but she was actually attached to you. In the lore, Zack actually got the nickname the returning pool because kids from Zon would throw rocks at him, and in response, Zack would throw them back. Zed is by far the most favored assassin champion in the game. A while back, there was a poll for those who selected assassin as their favorite class, and out of them, Zed was picked the most, being rated 27% higher than any other assassin. Zeri's splash art was actually changed 
changed upon release. After a few days, it was edited to show a darker skin tone, and this was the before and after. Ziggs' Japanese voice actor is Natsuki Hane, who actually also voices Heimerdinger and Viger as well. He's an extremely well-known voice actor, probably best known for his role as Tanjiro from Demon Slayer. In the lore during the Battle of Akathia, Zillion saved his people by freezing the entire city in time, but he doesn't know how he did it or how to undo it. Did you know Zoe did not actually earn her powers and is a large reason why she uses them so irresponsibly? Becoming an aspect requires a person to climb to the peak of Mount Targon, where they are chosen by a celestial to act as a projection of themselves on Runeterra. There aren't many aspects because 99% of people trying to make this climb die, but not Zoe, because she didn't even climb the mountain at all. The celestial god of Twilight found Zoe to be such a perfect match that she was just given the powers on the spot. I don't know whether that makes her character better or somehow even more annoying. Definitely more annoying. Zyra was initially intended to be a mid laner. Also, as a side note, we'll leave a link in the description. And hey, while you're in the description, don't forget to claim your free large bonus pack by downloading War Thunder using my link. Again, the pack includes premium vehicles, a premium account, boosters, and a ton more. It's actually a crazy good deal and an insanely fun free game. Again, one of my personal favorites, so make sure to check it out. Anyways, guys, thank you so freaking much for watching. If you want to watch more videos like this, go check out my four other videos exactly like this here. Don't forget to sub if you enjoyed, and happy holidays, everyone. A huge shout out to my tier three patrons, Devin Nockeck and James, and a massive shout out to my tier four patrons, Set Right. Thank you so freaking much to all my other incredible patrons, too. Bye.